Hey there, everyone, and welcome to AZ Drone's newest series on editing drone video. Now, in this series, we're going to be talking about Final Cut Pro and also DaVinci Resolve. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, Rich, why are you doing a series on video editing for drones? There's hundreds and thousands of fantastic videos out there and tutorials, free ones, paper ones. You get the idea. So why are we doing this? Well, I've always treated this as a beginner's channel, people just starting out to drone work and taking their first steps and learning about the different facets of drone flight. So there are a lot of channels talking about how to fly your drones, how to use autonomous flight applications, how to do 2D and 3D models, how to film cinematic video. All that stuff's great, but you've got to start somewhere. So while there's a lot of great channels and a lot of great videos out there, some of them, even the ones that say they're a beginner's video, actually kind of jump right into the deeper end of the swimming pool. We're going to wade into this. We're, we're, we're going to go to the shallow end, and we're going to start from the beginning. So starting from the beginning right now for me means that we're going to be doing several Final Cut videos, and then of course we're going to jump over and do some DaVinci Resolve videos as well. One of the things you're going to notice uh, with these video editors is they look very similar um, in where all of your tools are. So Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, even iMovie. All the stuff has some basic familiar things. So with all that said, let's just go ahead, dive right in. We're going to be approaching this as folks who are completely new to video editing, period. And we're going to start out real slow but then we'll build and we'll actually work on a project together, okay? So the first thing, I have Final Cut Pro up. We're using an Apple M1 Mini uh, to do this. We also have an Apple Studio in the studio, but I wanted to use the M1 Mini for this one. Now, we're looking at Final Cut Pro and it looks like I've already got a library called Untitled here. So when things first start out, Final Cut Pro will set up a library, and I've used it for doing a couple tests, so we've got a couple projects in here, but I'm going to close that, and we're going to be making a new library for ourselves. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to do New, and I'd like to create a completely new library. That library is going to be put onto an external SSD drive, and we're going to put it into number one, Final Cut, and that is where the library itself is going to go. So let's do Final Cut. So we're going to call this library Final Cut for Drones. Now, if we go over to the SSD drive afterward, we should find that library. So we've given it a name. We've put a location where it's going to live in Final Cut for Drones in this external drive. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save on that. And let's just go and open that particular SSD drive. And there we go. There is our Final Cut library. So going forward with whatever we're doing in this training series, we're going to be utilizing this Final Cut library right here. So I'm going to close that. Let's go back down, open Final Cut back up here. And now we have this new library. And let's see what's in it. Well, nothing's really in it right now. We still have that untitled library as well, and that had a couple of things in it. If we went there, there you go. But let's go back up to Final Cut for Drones, and there's nothing in this at the moment. And what we're going to do next, just to get ourselves started, I'm going to go and create a new event. So an event can contain lots of our clips, and an event is part of a project. When I do a new event, so I'm just clicking on that, and we're going to give it an event name, and we're going to call this one, and let's call it Final Cut Start. Okay, now take a look at this really quick, because probably you're going to make some missteps as you go along. And one of the first things that you could do in a misstep is actually creating an event that uh, is not sized the way you want it. So this event name, one Final Cut Start, it is in the library Final Cut for Drones, and I'm going to have it make a new project that goes along with it. Actually, I'm going to just hit Control-C here, or Command-C, to copy the name. 
So I'm going to have it create a new project. And the projects that I do for YouTube are normally 1080, so standard high def, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. Let's say you'd been out shooting 4K or maybe 2K or whichever K we've got out there today. You can actually do 2K, 4K, 5K, 8K. So if we knew that this was a higher end project where all of our video capture was done in 4K, then maybe we want to set this one up for 4K. In my case, for doing tutorials and doing presentations for clients, covering their build sites and their progression sites, I have found that doing standard 1080 high def is going to be not only good enough, but great enough for a lot of our uh, clients. So I'm going to go with 1080 here today. Uh, the resolution 1920 by 1080, uh, 29.97p, so ba basically 30 frames. Um, I'm going to go with Apple ProRes. That's the default for me. And, you know, getting into higher level topics, we could talk about why we want to use other rendering. And finally, we're looking down here at our audio. It's going to be stereo 48 kilohertz. All right. We could also do use automatic settings. If we did use automatic settings, what would happen is the first clip that you drag into your timeline or import is going to set the standard. So if you had a 4K clip that you were bringing in and you set it to use automatic settings here, it's going to do it based on the first video coming in. I'd rather not do that. I want this to be a standard HD um, project here. So I'm going to say OK. And now here we go. Some things have changed. We've got an untitled project here, and I'm just going to put that name in there too. So the project and the event name are the same. And there we are with our final cut start. And before we start putting things in here or doing anything wacky, um, let's take a look around the interface that we have. Number one, up on the top bar, we've got your standard file with different things, open library, closed library. Um, you have import for importing video. Going over to edit, we've got a lot of tools in here. We'll talk about them as we get to them. But right now, for this particular lesson, we're starting at round zero here. All right. We also have options for trimming. We can make markers. We can do things with our clips. We can modify things with our clips, analyze and fix. Once again, we'll see some of this advanced stuff down the road this particular lesson, we're getting a feel for the interface. Uh, different views in here, different windows. You can change your workspace around. So that's what we're going to talk about next is the workspace. And um, so you can customize how everything looks to you. So here is our overall workspace right now. Normally, when you start with Final Cut, on the left hand side, we're going to have our Final Cut libraries, projects, and events. So there we go. That's very normal. And then right next to it, you'll have stuff going under your project, all of your clips that you're bringing in, no matter how you import them. In the center, we've got our main viewing area for when we're doing our editing. We can, of course, resize this and we can also set it to fit our uh, clips or we could zoom in and zoom out. And then we have view, which is a lot of different tools up on the upper right here. We have the show or hide the browser. Let's see, show or hide our timeline, show or hide our inspector. And then we also have a button for saving or exporting. Over here on the right hand side, right now we've got nothing to inspect. But once we start putting video on things into here, we will have things in our inspector area. Down on the bottom, the main area, all this blank space. This is our timeline. This is where we're going to be dropping things in. Over on the right hand side, we've got a couple of things going on here. So we have our transitions for when things dissolve and fade in and fade out. Um, we also have access to our effects and we do have video and audio effects. Now video and audio effects come with Final Cut. So you don't have to run out and get a bunch of new ones. But if you start buying plugins for Final Cut for doing fancy things, they'll probably show up in your effects browser. And they'll also probably show up in your titles. By the way, we kind of raced past one thing. So here we are. We've got our main uh, libraries. And then we could look at our media collection. And then we can show or hide titles. We have all these different types of titles. And we'll talk about that in a future lesson. 
But so really quick, really fast, this is what we're working with here. So over here, basically our storage of our materials and naming of our libraries and of our projects. Center, that's our video editing area. We've got the inspector area on the right. We've got some effects and some transitions. And then we've also got our giant timeline. So before we wrap this intro up, I thought it'd be great to show you um, importing things. So I'm just, I'm actually shrinking this window for myself. And we're going to go to that folder where we have our Final Cut library. And I also put some video files in here. So with those video files, this is from a project that we flew recently for a client. And we're going to be using some of the video clips for this for the duration of our um, of our talk here when it comes to using Final Cut for editing our drone video. So I've got the folder right here, and I mark this for myself. If I click and drag this onto the timeline, boom, there we go. So now I'm just going to close my folder there, and we're going to give ourselves the whole screen again. Now, also keep in mind that there are multiple ways to manage your video. Normally, I use a program called Kino to organize and catalog my video. Maybe we'll do an in-depth bit on Kino down the road. You don't have to use a specific management tool. You can just use a folder system that you devised on your own. And I would just suggest that if you're using an external SSD drive like I am, that my library is on the SSD drive and all of my files are on the SSD drive because it's a quicker external drive. The reason why I'm personally using SSD drives here is very simple. The Mac Mini M1 does not have a lot of storage space on it. So with that in mind, you know, I'm using external drives for most of my editing and they really don't seem to impact my speed all that much. Now that we've um, imported this particular file, You'll see over here on the left hand side, there is that whole clip. So we can see our clips under our projects. You'll notice project, it says we have one project right now and we have this one clip. So we dragged that onto the timeline. Can we do something else? Are there other ways to do it? Of course, like any other video editing program or photography program or other types of editing tools, there's 10 different ways to do the same thing. So in Lightroom, I've got like, you know, five or six ways to export, multiple ways to import, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing can be said in Lightroom or DaVinci or Premiere Pro. <laughs> You've got nine ways to Sunday to do this thing. So when I first plug in an external drive, if the external drive's got a bunch of video on it, it will usually pop up here in Final Cut and say, hey, do you want to import all this stuff? And I usually say no. So normally I'm dragging things into the timeline or I'm exporting them from Kino into, um, into Final Cut. So here we have an import. So import media. So we could look for all types of media. And let's go to that all email folder. And that in the final cut folder, let's go in there. And there's our videos in there. So let's say I wanted to pick this one, number 48. And I've selected it. I can import it this way. By the way, in this media importer, it does have us on the left hand side, our devices on the right hand side, add to the existing event, final cut start. Um, we could copy this to our library, but that's going to make the library get big really fast. You're going to lose a lot of storage space. So I would say leave the files in place. Um, keywords. So if we had keywords on them, we can grab them from the finder tags or from our folders. We could have it analyze the video. I'm not going to do that. That's getting way ahead of ourselves. Right now, we're just getting the video in, and um, it could also find people for us. It could start transcoding optimized media for us immediately. We're going to talk more in depth about that later. Um, for the moment, I don't have that set. And then we've got our codec, so ProRes proxy, and we could analyze the audio for us. Now, we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff ourselves in the project, so some of these things that they're doing up front just makes it go a little quicker for you on the front end. But if you're going to be going in and editing your audio um, and you want to create your optimized media later, that's OK. So just right here, see for beginners, this is a lot to digest in one, in the first part of the series. So I'm just going to select DJI 48 and I'm going to import selected. 
Now, what I want you to take a look at, we drag that first one, to, uh, number 22 in here. But now, if we look on the left-hand side under our projects, we have the clip DJI 0022, and now we have the clip DJI 0048 as well. So let's say I wanted this one in here as well. I didn't drag it directly onto the timeline. I did an import instead. And now I could drag this off into my timeline. Boom, there I go. And now we have the DJI 0022 clip and the DJI 0048 clip. All right. By the way, before we stop this one, I'm going to point out to you now that we have these clips in here and we can select these clips. Looking back over on the right hand side before, remember the inspector here was pretty empty, not a lot of information. Now that we have the clip in here, um, we can start working with the clip, transforming it, cropping it, distorting it, adding stabilization to it. Hey, we do drone flight. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do stabilization there. And I'm going to click over to the next clip and I'm going to do stabilization as well. So right now that's transcoding for me. It'll take a few moments and usually it doesn't take too long. You do not have to use um, the highest settings in your preview window. You could finish all of the transcoding and rendering down the road. So this is a lot to unpack. So now what I want you to do is, you know, you can think about setting up your first uh, Final Cut library and you know where you want to place the library if you're using external media for that and um, then we'll get into the next video where we're going to talk a little bit about basic editing as well but by the way so when i'm looking at these clips just so you know um, when a clip is highlighted here's our little icon for show the video inspector so this is for the video we can also go in here and do some color correction work if we wanted to so they call this color grading and also we have the info inspector and this inspector is telling us about clip dji 0048 that's the one that's highlighted i could put notes in there if i make changes we're going to have a last modified this is a video and then it also has an area for audio rolls but there's no audio on this one because this was captured with my drone so this does give us information uh, about our clip and down here at the bottom you can see we've got the original it's not optimized yet and it's no proxy is being done for it yet now right here i could go over to transcode media when i'm starting to get things ready but we're getting ahead of ourselves here and i want to make sure we don't do that because like i said while there are a lot of great video series out there on becoming familiar with final cut or davinci or premiere pro a lot of folks still do jump right in and we end up assuming that you've got more knowledge than you do about video editing. So we're keeping this to the basics. And by the way, the reason why we're doing this new series is uh, pretty straightforward. I did a poll a couple of months ago um, of my subscribers here on YouTube and I asked them where they felt weakest in uh, their drone business skills. 71% of the respondents said it was their video editing skills. So with that in mind, I said, it's time to do a series for folks, even though there are so many videos out there on how to do this and great videos, by the way, if you're coming along in this and you are, you've got some insights into editing with Final Cut, I would strongly suggest checking out the channel AV Ultra. They've got some great training over there as well for utilizing Final Cut Pro. All right, everyone, we're going to call this one a wrap. So what we did here is we created a new library. Um, we got ourselves set up with a new project and some new events. Uh, we dragged a couple of clips into the timeline. We can also drag audio clips into this timeline. And in the next video, we're going to go through and talk about some very, very um, simple editing and what we're going to do here. And uh, so we'll be talking about that in, uh, in the next part of this series. I hope this one was informative and helpful. Please be sure to send comments along to me anytime, and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Also, suggestions for topics or suggestions for this series specifically. We'll see you in the next video, everybody.